Hi everybody, today I'm with Callie. We're gonna talk about a very uh, tough uh, topic today that so many of you are facing and there's probably millions in the world that's going through the same thing. And that is on domestic violence. Callie has gone through uh, stuff in her life um, that was very hurtful, painful, and abuse. You don't always have to be physically abused for domestic violence, it could be mental abuse, threatening with guns, uh, told you can't take showers, treating you like property. Um, what What's your definition of uh, um, domestic violence, Callie? Domestic violence constitutes a whole bunch of things. It, it, it can be anywhere from psychological abuse, uh, men, uh, emotional abuse, uh, financial abuse, spiritual abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, and sexual abuse. So really, it's a whole um, array of things that can happen. Now, with a lot of people that have gone, or they're victims of abuse, some of them nece didn't necessarily experience um, physical abuse. But I will say this, that um, in my experience, having gone through um, the psychological, emotional, verbal, um, and financial parts of it, that the effects of that type of abuse on you is physical. It causes your body to release, you know, the negative hormones such as cortisol and noradrenaline and things like that, which can cause a lot of um, uh, the breakdown of the body, um, CPTSD, which is what I have. And for people who don't know what CPTSD, it's basically a physical brain trauma. Physical. That's the key word is physical. It actually shrinks um, and affects certain parts of your brain, such as the amygdala, the hippocampus, and your prefrontal cortex. Um, which a lot of it is your fight or flight responses and stuff. So when your body is going through that and you're secreting these hormones, etc., and it's causing you to have hair loss, loss of weight, gain of weight, uh, insomnia, chronic fatigue, uh, you know, the list goes on. Um, for people who have been in it long term, and again, you know, keep in mind everybody's different, um, it affects them very negatively and it can make you seriously sick and in some cases it can even kill you. So you're like an inmate and your spouse or whoever's committing it is like the warden. You're his property. He owns you. Um, um, in those cases, usually, so there's a difference between abuse and narcissistic abuse. Uh, they are very different, very, very black and white from each other. Um, there are clinical therapists out there um, that people can find online. Dr. Romani is one of them um, and a bunch of other people. Um, that talk about um, the differences between the two and how it affects you. And so typically people who suffer from narcissistic personality disorder uh, look at their partner as an object um, or, or property, if, if that's you know the word that some of them uh, use. In my case, it was used where um, I was property, you know. Mm. And you know, um, when somebody is objectified to that level, where they are nothing more than, let's say, this cell phone that's in my hand, you know, you don't have, your autonomy is gone, it's stripped, it's gone, your identity gone. Everything that makes you who you were and who you become are completely very different things. You begin to basically live in what's called the fantasy world with your narcissistic partner, where you begin to, it's not a split personality, but you begin to split, meaning, you know, you begin to see your partner at certain times as really, really good, and at <coughs> other times, really, really bad. You know, they're, they're, it's just it's very black and white. You begin to live in that same mirror as the person who's abusing you. You're being gaslighted. You don't even know your own reality. Now, it's easy for somebody like me to say is, why doesn't the woman just leave and, or the guy just leave and go to the police? Um, you might want to elaborate on so, that. So, unfortunately, a lot of people, there's a stigma, I don't know if that's the right word to use, where, well, why don't you just leave? And, you know, even for myself, before I went through what I went through, you know, uh, if, if I met someone like that, it'd be like, well, why don't you just leave? But there's so much that goes into exiting a relationship. And typically, the most dangerous time for a victim is leaving, is exiting. And so sometimes, according to the domestic abuse um, here in the United States, 
on average, it takes a woman or a man um, seven times, seven times of attempts before they actually successfully leave. And a lot of it's because maybe they have a kid or children. Uh, the, the, the abusive spouse or partner uh, did not want their partner or spouse to work. You know, it was always, oh, I'll, I'll take care of you. You know, you don't have to worry, you know, like you just have to stay at home and, and, and just take care of the kids. And it sounds all nice and fuzzy, you know, in, 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 you know, in the beginning, because you're like, oh, you know, this guy's a really good guy and he's going to take care of me. And all I got to do is concentrate on being a homemaker. But what a lot of people don't realize in the beginning of that is that really what they're doing is they're grooming you, they're conditioning you to become absolutely dependent on them. And gradually you're giving up your independence, which also includes your social life, your family ties. They even use your children against you. They will turn your children against you so that you are alienated. They will use, there's a term in the uh, community called uh, flying monkeys. And so basically the flying monkeys are the enablers, the people who side with the narcissistic person or the abuser. Um, because they themselves are living in the, the illusion that, you know, the, the abuser is the victim. They're the victim and the real victim is the perpetrator. And so typically the abuser or the narcissist will go up to their families, their friends, their partner's friends, and um, triangulate people to believe a story that isn't true. And um, when that reality hits on the victim, it's even, it's devastating. It's devastating because now, now, no, you know, they're not only alone physically and mentally, but they are, there's nobody there that will save them from that situation. And when I say save, I mean physically extricate them from that because everybody is so convinced that, you know, the abuser is the victim. Um, it's, it's sad. Uh, you know, there's got to be thousands, of, well, probably millions of people in the United States that's going through something similar to what you did. Every single day. A woman or a man it either commits suicide or is murdered by a spouse who is, or a partner who is abusive and there's no excuse for that every day statistically um, luckily for myself I was able to survive what I went through and I could have been just another statistic and all these people that are statistics their their stories are unheard their voices are forever muted Right. And the people that, you know, might have known about it or, you know, not to say that they um, maliciously don't want to um, admit what happens, but, you know, the, the, there is that, there's kind of that, that, um, that, that split between wanting to say, wanting to defend the abuse, the abuse and say, hey, you know what, we know what happened to you. And then there is that whole you know, issue of, well, you know, that that was my daughter or that was my son or that was my mother or whoever that abused you. And, you know, there's that loyalty, that tied to that person that you don't want to, you just feel guilty for crossing. So there's a tug of war um, with that. I know under President Obama, he had a law passed to get stricter on domestic violence. I and, believe he passed that one. Yeah, yeah, and then I think it's the second one or the third domestic violence is automatically a felony. I think it's the third one. And we have people in, in our state prisons for domestic violence. We have people in federal prison that would take their wife or, or, or whoever they're with across state lines, which makes mm -hmm. it felon, I mean federal. So, um, you know, and if you do have the anger or if you know you're hurting someone, there is counseling available for you. Don't go out and just keep hurting someone. Can't, I'll, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'm going to interject on that because okay. counseling is only good for when the person is cognitively self-aware that they have a problem right. and are willing to, which, you know, even in Alcoholics Anonymous, the first step is saying, I have a problem. Right. Where can I go to get help for that? Typically, people um, who suffer from narcissistic personality disorder, which is a cluster B disorder, um, borderline personality disorder, etc. Those are all the cluster B personality disorders. Um, they, most of them, about 97% of them on average do not and will not ever get properly diagnosed and they will never get the help that they need. When they do go to therapy, 9.5 times out of 10, the therapist gets duped 
the therapist begins to believe that the abuser is the victim and the partner or spouse is the one who's aggravating things. So a lot of times, you know, um, there's a lot of therapists out there now currently who are saying to people, to victims, do not do couples therapy with that kind of person. Do not. It is dangerous and you end up looking more like the abuser than, you know, than the victim. What do you, what do you recommend to the um, victim? What, what can the victim do if, he's, if he or she is really having a problem? What are some they got to get out. I mean, getting out, that's a, that's a very... Hard word to say. It's a very hard word to say because there's a lot more that goes to it than just simply, you know, getting your two feet and walking out the door. You got to have an exit plan. You got to have people that you absolutely 100% trust. You have to start squirreling away secretly money that is not kept in your bank account, not kept in your home, that you can keep somewhere so that if and or when you decide you have had enough, that you can safely get away. Right. And you can make a comment on YouTube or Facebook and we'll try to hook you up with the right people or give you some, I can't give you any advice on this, but maybe Callie can um, refer you someplace if you're actually struggling and having a problem with domestic violence. So feel free to comment um, and we'll do whatever we can do to help. Um, you know, again, I'm James Cronenberg. This is Callie. Uh, nice to meet y'all. And we'll be back in the future with an update. But be safe, everybody.